going on YouTube? Welcome back, it's Yums, and today we are about to absolutely shut down Gun Split Twins. This red zone halfback corner is not living on my field anymore. But before we jump into it, can I ask you one favor? Over 90% of you are not subscribed to the video. If you could please kindly hit that subscribe button. We are on the journey to 1,000 subscribers to fulfill a childhood dream of doing this full time. Let's jump into it. Before we jump into the defense, one thing I did forget to mention while I was making the tutorial, disclaimer that was made after, vitamin brain, my apologies, is when you set the defense up, like I show you in a minute here, you want to make sure that you press Y right on the right stick, Y again up on the right stick. So we want to shade outside and up every play outside and up every play against a gun split twins this is going to protect those sidelines even better and the guys are going to sink a little bit better against the running back route i forgot to mention that it is a huge tip make sure you are shading outside and up over on uh gun split twins i apologize for not putting that in but here it is before Thank you, Dan. Editor Dan is the best. As I mentioned in the intro today, we are going to be shutting down the gun split twins offense using the double Mabel. Popping up on screen somewhere right about now is a video where I talked about the single Mabel coverage and using that to shut down flood concepts, specifically Z spot. Now we're going to talk about shutting down crossing concepts targeting both sidelines using the double Mabel. Specifically, we're gonna talk about this post halfback corner play. This is not living on my field anymore. So let's jump into the coaching adjustments. We have play ball, we always go on play ball. Now for zone drops on this one, we want our light blues or our flats to play at 20, 20 yards from the line of scrimmage. And we want our purples or our curl flats to play at 10 or 10 yards from the line of scrimmage. Remember, we went over that in a previous video as well. Now, we can be in 335. We can be in 335 wide for this. It does not matter. We could be in another nickel set. We just want to make sure that we are in a Tampa 2 or cover 2 sync defense. Cover 4 quarters, cover 4 drop. Cover three, they do not really play this well. Uh, I like the Tampa two shell the best for this. So we're gonna work out of that. Uh, one of the first ways I've seen them set this play up is actually to go like this and just cross the tight end and go everyone to that side. So for us on the defensive side of the ball, we want to double tap Y, press Y a third time, and right on the left stick to put that guy in a purple. Then we're going to double tap right on the D-pad, A, and right on the left stick to put that guy in a purple. Now we are going to crash the offensive line up twice and contain. We've talked about that in previous videos, so I'm not going to go over that too much here. We're going to blitz angle our user some people say this doesn't matter this year i agree it doesn't matter as far as speed in previous years you did get a speed boost you don't this year but i believe tinfoil hat theory that it does matter with the offensive line targeting when you hover you seem to get a better hover if you are in a blitz angle than if you're in a zone uh now against the run you want to be in a zone but that is a different story for a different video now why uh, i mean excuse me x we have a couple different options to put in here. The first one I am gonna show you is to put him in a middle third. So we're gonna go up on the left stick and you can see this is a typical cover to double Mabel that we set up. Y'all have seen me run this coverage probably before if you have stopped by the stream, shameless plug, yums underscore nine five on Twitch. Stop by, say what's up. But let's go ahead and snap this ball and see how this plays out. You're gonna hover here, we drop back here. Cool. Let's throw that ball away and we will go ahead and take a look at the replay. 
So you can see their first read on this uh, in this offense out of this play is always going to be this running back. They want to hit this running back and they want to hit him over here. So you can see they're not going to want to do it in this situation. We have a man in this area and uh, you can see these crossers are going to be their second instinct. We also have people in the area. Now, I'll, I'll admit nothing is tight coverage against this play. But it's tight enough that they don't want to throw it against your acros. Right? And primarily, as I said, they're looking to throw these routes here. And here. And here. You know what I'm saying? They're looking to throw these routes on the sideline. Their best option here would actually be 14. CRD path actually pays a little bit of attention here. That's probably their best option. But by there, the pass rush in Mutt would have got there. JJ Watt got leveled. But we have three unpredictables here. And uh, we are eaten there. Let's get into another way I like to set it up. Let's say they actually go ahead and set their stuff up the same way. I don't know how JJ Watt has an X factor after getting pancaked, but okay. And let's say we actually go ahead and start by setting our stuff up the exact same way so we'll put those two guys in purples we'll crash the uh defensive lineup twice and we'll go ahead and contain but now instead we're gonna go ahead and put x in a man coverage assignment on b the only difference here is you may if you have a, a ko ability on this guy you may want to put this guy in the man coverage assignment and this guy in the purple. Just remember, it is going to take this guy longer to get out in this flat, a lot longer than it would take this guy. So if they, for some reason, hitch uh, 13, you know, their outside receiver here, then this guy could actually make a play on the ball. This guy is going to be miles away. So let's actually snap this and see how this one plays out. And see, same thing, we're hovering in the middle of the field and cool now remember the key to zone defense is getting the pressure there before they get the read they want so i can see there is something open downfield but the pressure did get there in time again they're trying to hit this on the sideline we have this over here we have the crosser covered this guy's covered and this guy's extra covered so again, right here, their best bet is to hit this tight end. But again, they're trying to hit it on the deep end of it. So I have found this coverage to be pretty effective. The other way that they like to set it up sometimes is they will go ahead and, well, that's the end of the quarter. Hold on there. And before I was so rudely interrupted by the end of the quarter, the other way they like to set it up is they will maybe go ahead and actually delay fade now that they can't streak and we will go ahead and set our defense up the same way oh that's not what we wanted okay so we have that and then we can go ahead and man cover there and we will go ahead and they're not showing okay cool they weren't showing the purple and again we are hovering in the middle and you can see that is locked down so we'll go back and take a look at this replay and again this mabel is going to take care of this side of the field this is going to take care of this side of the field Let's show it one more time with one more variation that they might run. Which is going to be if they actually put their tight end on a corner. So they have this high, low and middle read here and the little running back read. We're going to set our defense up the same way. right and they are going for that 
I would go ahead and snap this ball. And again, we are playing here. And you can see that is, again, fantastic coverage. Now they did get a guy open late. But again, hopefully our pressure in it mutt is there by then. Let's take a look at that. You can see it's covered on both sidelines. We are good down the middle. The only part where it drops off is Mike kind of gets dropped here late. But again, the pressure should be there in Mutt by then. The other way we could stop that is using that double third that we talked about uh, a couple of takes ago. So let's go ahead and show you that last thing I was talking about. We can go ahead and set our defense up in the same way. But go ahead and put that third that I was talking about before. And you can see, now we can snap this ball. Oop, I got caught on the line. But you can see that is a little bit better coverage on Mike downfield. He doesn't get dropped off so hard. He gets passed off a little bit nicer. So that's also an option that we can do. That's going to wrap up our gun split twins post halfback corner shutdown defensive tutorial. We taught y'all a little bit about the double Mabel out of the cover two. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see next time. And before we get out of here, if I could ask you a quick favor, our editor, TFG Squirrely Dan, say hi to the people through a note or something on the screen, Dan. Dan has started streaming on Twitch.tv. If you could please give him a follow, I will have him put his link on screen now, his Twitch name, and there will be a link in the description. He is on the road to 50 followers so he can hit that affiliate mark. Please head on over and help our guy out. He helps us out here every single day, helping me make fire content for you. I hope you all have a, a fantastic rest of your day on and off the gridiron. And uh, Hop says bye too. Right, Hops?